much for being in the house. Good morning to everybody who is watching online today. Thanks so much for tuning in to worship with us. So we're going to take a few minutes and we will have corporate worship together. And then we've got a few announcements. We're going to tell you about some things that are going on here at, at, the, at God's house and take our offering. And then Pastor Sammy has a message for us today. If you haven't been in a while, he's been doing a series. Uh, if you don't know, we write a lot of original songs here at the church. And so he's been doing a series on here are the songs we've written and here is where they are located in the, in the Bible and why we wrote them. And so I'm super excited because today the song that we're going to be uh, talking about is called City on a Hill. And actually, Eric, we put him front and center this morning. Would you give Eric a hand, please? Give him a round of applause. Yes. This was 95% written by yeah, him and 2% written by Sammy and I. We helped him a little bit. But it's out of, found out of Matthew, and it talks about being a city on a hill. You ready to start it? Sure and how our light cannot be hidden, that we have a message that needs to be shared with the world, yes? So that's what we're going to sing about this morning. I just found out I've been forgiven. My debt's been paid the last time. I'm stepping out because this light can't be hidden, and I'm going to let it shine, let it shine. I just found out Stemming out, cause this light can be here, and I'm gonna need a child. Basking the world to the side, I'm dancing his red. Even while there are souls to be won, we hear life to be with the human day. Cause I belong to you with see on.
second, close your eyes this morning. Jesus, you are our king. You are our king forever and ever and ever because of what you did for us, because of the way that you gave your life for us, the way that the life that you did have, the way that you lived it for us as an example, and then and then gave it on a cross for us so that your grace would be able to cover us and be there for us.
this morning. Say, I will make room. You guys sing. And I will make room. those burdens feel so heavy that we can almost not breathe sometimes. We carry the whole weight of the world on our shoulders, and yet there's absolutely nothing that we can control. But the Bible says that your yoke is easy and your burden is light. So today I ask that you would show up for each and every person today, that you would lift that heavy burden off of their shoulders, that you would show up in the way that you want to, Lord, help us to let go of our tradition, our religion, our expectations of you and of what we think that you are supposed to do and just blow our mind. 
hearts. <laughs> God, would you just this week blow our minds with an answer to whatever it is that we need, that each and every person here needs, God. And would you wrap them in your love? I pray peace right now. Oh, I pray peace. Peace right now over each and every person that is in this place. No more striving. No more worrying. No more trying. No more anxiety. No more panic. In Jesus' name, I speak peace from the peacemaker unto you today. Lord, we'll let you do whatever you want to do in our lives today because this is our surrender. for spending time in worship with me. Jeremy, would you welcome and greet everybody this morning for me? Welcome, everybody, to God's House of Orlando. How you feeling this morning? Oh, man, isn't it so cool when you lay your burden down or something that's been troubling you or something that's been weighing you down? You get a lightness. <laughs> I'm up here laying stuff down, and it just kind of kind of makes you want to dance, <laughs> which is amazing, I hope each and uh, all of you can feel that today. It is time for uh, Z-Gen to be dismissed. Usually they go crazy. Z-Gen! Woo! <laughs> Excellent. You guys have fun uh, doing your stuff. Well, welcome once again. Uh, if you're watching online, if you're here in the house, uh, this is God's House Orlando. We are the loving church. I love you guys. Uh, we are creative church loving a creative city. To Christ, uh, we are committed to experiencing and expressing the love of God to others. We do this through the three E's. It's encounter the living God, equip with his word and spirit, and engage in the world around us. Uh, how many of you folks uh, might be here for the first time? If you're here, just give me a short raise of your hand. Uh, we hope that our greeters met you at the door. Okay, yeah, we got a couple right there. Uh, hopefully our greeters met you at the door and gave you a little well visitor's welcome packet. Cool. There's chocolate in there. <laughs> There's also a little information card. Uh, we would love you to take that out and fill it out uh, with your name and information so we can contact you and uh, let you guys know uh, everything that we have going on right here at God's House, all kinds of fun events and activities here associated with the church that's not just on Sundays. Uh, you folks watching online, you can also text NEW to GHO and get updates and alerts of all the cool stuff going on. Uh, also for daily inspiration, we're on Instagram and Facebook and all that stuff. We are plugged in. All right, announcements. We have a lot of them this morning, so I'm going to whip through them Sunday. April 17th is Easter Sunday. He is risen. You know it. Uh, Love Divine. So come celebrate Easter Sunday with us. Uh, Love Divine. It's going to be right here in the house Sunday, April 17th. It is a great opportunity to invite a friend that never goes to church. You know they come on Easter. It's once a year. Drag them in here <laughs> and show them some love and uh, express the love of God to them and to others. It's a great opportunity to get folks in here. It will be a very special service, so come on in. Uh, next up, small group Christian Yoga is back. Yeah. Mondays in March, mind, body, and spirit. It is great. We get in here. We pray for each other. We have prayer requests. We also uh, do some stretching. It can be any level of yoga uh, that you're into. It's a namaste and pray. This is my tree. Thank you so much. Never on the knee joint. Never on the knee joint. Uh, okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh, next up, empower baby goat yoga. <laughs> or as the goats say, what the heck are you doing to me, lady? 
Um, Sunday, April 3rd, 3 p.m., small group uh, for women. It's so cool. Uh, you got to give it up to the ladies. They're always doing something new and different to experience and, and bond together. So it's really, really fun. Uh, baby goat yoga. It's going to meet at the wi Wildflower Farms in Orlando for about an hour of yoga <laughs> with the goats. Uh, and there'll be little photos of little cute baby goats. So uh, you don't want to miss that. You can sign up on the app. How many people have a God's House app? It's absolutely spectacular. Uh, thank you. You scroll down there. Uh, you just <laughs> getting lots of Jesus. Okay, you at home. I heard the groans. Also, it's okay. Uh, you just go on there, scroll down. Super easy to sign up for all of these events. You just uh, scroll down to the date, click yeah. Uh, I'm gonna sign up and do that. Uh, baby goats. It's uh, 25 bucks. Only 20 spots available. I think a lot of those have been taken up. So get on that app and sign up if you want to do that. Next up, Z Gen Movie Night. Friday, April 15th, 6.30 to 9.30 uh, p.m. This movie night plays, uh, takes place on Good Friday, and they'll be watching Risen. We'll also have a fun raffle uh, to be entered. Go to the app uh, once again and uh, in upcoming events, and there's a link to sign up for all of you Z Jenners or parents of Z Jenners. Um, and then for Z Gen, again, oh, man, they got all kinds of cool stuff happening. Uh, it looks like uh, a glow party. Friday, May 6th, 7 p.m. Very cool. I went to my 30-year college reunion last night. I wished it was a glow party. <laughs> We've slowed down a little <laughs> after 30 years. Just nice, quiet conversation. <laughs> it was lovely. But I remember the glow parties, and they were super, super fun. So take your Z-Jenner, Friday, May 6th, 7 to 9 p.m. Uh, there's all kinds of, oh, and yeah, wear clothes that, uh, tell them to wear clothes that glow, all the kids with the glow clothes. I used to have glow clothes. Awesome. Uh, special music planned as well as a message. Uh, okay, I think that's it. Uh, once again, the quick hits. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook, let you know about cool upcoming events. Also, some great daily inspiration there. We're on all of the social medias, so check it out. Text us to find out all the cool stuff happening here for you and for your Z Jenners. Uh, right now, please welcome to the stage for your offering teaching. She wrote the book, <laughs> the one and only <laughs> Miss Shannon Pollock. Thank you. <laughs> All right, good morning, everybody. Ladies, I just want to reiterate about my baby goat yoga. It's because I'm super excited about it. You don't even have to do the yoga. Just, like, bring a little mat or a blanket and sit down, and you can play with the baby goats while the rest of us do yoga. I'm just saying baby goats. It's amazing. And we get to stay for an extra half an hour and take pictures with the goats. All right? So go to the app and scroll down to upcoming events, and then you'll find the date in there on April 3rd, and you can sign up and save your spot there. All right, so we are. I'm going to take our offering. And I'm super excited about it this morning. Now, if you were visiting with us, we are not asking that you give in the offering because your gift to us is that you're here today. But I will ask you to take a moment right now while I'm talking and take that visitor card out and fill it out. And then it, when we're done, everybody will get up and go to the back to put their gifts in the buckets that are on either side of the sanctuary. Just put that in there so we can send you a letter saying thanks so much for visiting with us this morning. So I'm going to ask you all to take just a moment and think back, because I know everyone has this. Everyone has a low moment in their life, or like your kind of lowest moment, or rock bottom, or just like, you're like, ooh, that was, just a, that was just a dark, dark time. So I want you to take a moment, and I just want you to think about it for a minute. Where were you? What was going on? Was it maybe a physical challenge? Was it a, a job challenge? An economic challenge? Was it family or people? Was it emotional? What, what was it? Everybody got one? You got one in your minds? Everybody got one? Can you remember what it was? All right. Now, the reason that I want to ask you this is I want you to raise your hand. Well, let's do this. Raise your hand if you can remember it. You got a time in your hand. Okay, everybody's got one. Now, raise your hand if at some point you had help. Someone came and helped you. Okay. Either someone or something stepped up to help you or support you. We all need each other. So... I'm, I'm leading up. We're, we're actually going to gonna do our normal offering, but I'm going to open it up today because there is a world crisis going on in Ukraine, right? One million people have fled Ukraine, mostly women and children. The numbers are unverified, but I know there's at least over 300 people, including children, that have, that have been killed. 
we personally know of at least two churches, I actually know of more, but two churches that we have personal relationships with that are taking refugees from Ukraine and are housing them. Uh, how many of you remember Mariusz Muszczynski? We all love Mariusz. His church in Apole is taking 185 families in. Their church people are opening their homes and taking in refugees. Uh, Andrew and Miranda Brothers, who are our missionaries to Poland, they are working with a church called Genesis. They are also taking in refugees. And of course, we know Zibi and Magda in uh, Krakow. They are also helping out. So we have a lot of personal connections to people that we know, we love, and we support there. And they are helping in a very tangible way. So I just want to read Sammy's scripture to you this morning out of Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. These churches are doing good deeds. Think about the fact that those families that are coming to stay with them, maybe some of them don't know Christ. And they are receiving love and help and support from people who are going to share Christ with them. So what we're going to do is if you would like to support and you would like to help, you can go uh, online to our app or you can write a check if you want, however you would like to do it. On our app, there's a tab. If you scroll down from the tithes and offerings, there's a missions tab there. Everything today that comes in under the missions tab, we are going to forward on to our brothers and sisters in Poland that are going to be helping the Ukraine refugees, okay? So it is helping Ukraine, but it's helping meet a very tangible need. And it is a way that we can let our good deeds can help them, uh, can help our people in Poland, our brothers and sisters in Poland, minister to people in Ukraine who have been, uh, who had to, to flee their homes. And I can't think of a better way to let our light shine, all right? So if you would like to give to that, 100% of everything that you give will go. We don't take anything here when we send out to missions. We always give 100%. There's no administration fee or anything like that. We'll even pay all the wire transfer fees and all that, all right? We will figure that out. But I want to give you guys a chance to give to respond to a need that is there. All right? So I hope that that, I hope that, that encourages you, that you have a way to give today that can be very tangible and can help someone halfway around the world. Would you guys stand up with me this morning? Take your gifts. We say a corporate prayer. We say this out loud, and then we're going to sing a song. And if you want to do digital giving, it's back there on the kiosk, or checks can go back there. And please grab your visitor cards and put those in the buckets. Say this out loud with me. I thank and praise you, Lord, for providing seed for me to sow. You declare that I am blessed. I am the cheerful and excited giver who sows into the kingdom of God. The devil is rebuked for my sake, and blessings pursue and overtake me every day of my life. I have enough to live and enough to give, for my Father owns everything. All your promises are as good as done. And by faith, I'm expecting increase, abundance, promotion, elevation, and overflow. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's hear it for Eric's guitar. Man. <laughs> first new guitar I've gotten in like 16 first, years. First new guitar in 16 years? Oh, that's not true. I know someone's given to you. That's not a new guitar. That was you. This is that was, oh, okay. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs>
hey, honey, it's time for me to get a new guitar. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> we, uh, uh, guys, w- what, a, what a great job, uh, worship team. Thank you so much for uh, leading us. Did you like that song, City on a Hill? Uh, Eric wrote that song several years ago, and uh, we worked on it together, and uh, we, yeah, we've, we've done it a few times here in the church, but it's been a while, and so as we've been doing this series called Sing a New Song, where we highlight various original songs that have been written here at God's house and dig into the scriptures that inspired them. Uh, you know, all of the songs uh, in, in, written in the Bible are original songs put to music. Most of them were uh, written by uh, David when he was a shepherd boy, and then at later as he became a king, they, uh, Moses wrote a few of them. Some of the uh, Levites working in the temple wrote, uh, wrote some of the psalms. But these are original songs, expressions to try to magnify and glorify the incredible work of God. And so at being a creative church that's loving a creative city to Christ, we wanted to highlight the creative uh, expressions of God's incredible attributes. And, and so we wanted to highlight this particular song that has an incredible message for us, A City on a Hill, A City on a Hill. The, those lyrics, I just found out I've been forgiven. My debts have been paid to the last dime. Now, I don't know about you, but if you've ever been in debt, I mean like a lot of debt, and then find suddenly that that debt is overturned, forgiven, reduced, paid off, or finally paid, or whatever, whatever the outcome, when that debt is gone, how do you, how do you explain that feeling? How do you describe that feeling of relief of, oh, thank God? We say all the time when we teach on money, money management, uh, do you know what people do that are out of debt anything they want (laughs) when you're out of debt you can do anything you want because you don't have to give your money to the bank anymore that's an amazing amazing uh thing to feel um i'm stepping out so this light can't be hidden i'm gonna let it shine i'll bask in the warmth of the sun s-o-n dance in his rain while there are songs to be sung, his light through me will illuminate because I belong to a city on a hill where his light can't be hidden and his flame is burning still. We are called to be a witness and it's time to make a stand. When it's do or die, I will testify of the one, the great I am. And then it gives that nod to that Sunday school classic that many of us, if you were raised in church, you sang, this little light of mine. <laughs> I'm going to let it shine. See, we know it. This little light of mine. I'm going to let. We'll probably have to pay a royalty today. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. All right. uh, All right, Sunday school kids. You really want the gold star today. Do you remember the next one? Hide it under a bushel. (laughs) That's all. Hiding under a bushel. No. Uh, that, this, this scripture, this scripture, can I, just, um, can I just set the stage? On the beautiful, lush region of the north of Israel, the only green area of all of that rocky terrain, the beautiful Sea of Galilee, surrounded by mountains, gentle, uh, gentle hills and, and mountains on all sides, this gorgeous lake, beautiful lake, they call the Sea of Galilee. And there on one of its northern points is one of the one of the higher hills, not the highest hill. You can see Mount Hermon, which is the highest hill off in the distance with the snow cap. But there is a hill almost like immediately on the Sea of Galilee. And there is a there is a city on top of that hill that's been there for thousands of years. And no doubt, while the beautiful breezes of Galilee are blowing and you're sitting on the boat, as many of us have done, sitting on the boat, having worship time, you can look up and see on that nearby hill, that ancient city sitting up there. And you can imagine yourself at the feet of Jesus as he's doing his, 
his teaching and he's sharing with the crowds and he turns and he points to something they'd seen for years and they all knew. And he said, a city set on a hill is not meant to be hidden. It's meant to be seen. Let me take you to Matthew chapter 5, 14 through 16. Shannon read earlier, you are the light of the world, Jesus declares. Like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Number one, a city on a hill is meant to be seen. Meant to be, hit, uh, meant to be seen. Uh, you know, there, there's... Uh, several things that a, a city on a hill uh, actually represent to a wayward traveler. First of all, direction. When, <laughs> if you imagine yourself wandering in a strange land and you see a city set up on a hill, you know that you're entering civilization. You know that there is food, there's commerce, there's people, there's care, there's help, there's, there's medical attention, there's whatever. A city con contains all of that stuff for a wandering traveler. A city set on a hill means refuge. It also means safety and protection. In the ancient world, you were literally taking your life into your hand to journey from one city to another city because there were bandits along the way. There were various tribes that, that would... Uh, would take advantage of wayward travelers. It was always safer to travel together in a caravan. When the, when the Jews would come from all regions to go to, on their pilgrimages, to the temple in Jerusalem, they would travel in large groups and bands, which is the reason why a 12-year-old boy named Jesus would have been very easily lost by his parents, because it wasn't just the three of them walking to Jerusalem. That would be really bad parenting if you lose a 12-year-old when there's only three people walking. But because there was large, large crowds. So you imagine safety in numbers. But when you see a city set up on a hill, it is for direction, <coughs> it's to illuminate, and it is to provide refuge. Can you imagine that Jesus uses this analogy and he says you are the light of the world. You are like a city set up on a hill so that when others see you and see your life and they see your light in that position, they know they're near safety. They know they're near comfort. They know they're near help. They know they're near protection. Can we imagine the ways that Jesus intended for his followers to be seen as a city on a hill, not hidden, not somewhere out in the brush and in the bush, but to be available to people who are wandering. It's um, Jesus who coined the term lost and found. In Christianity, we use these terms. They become religious terms. They become what I call Christianese. Like we have our own language, you know what I mean? Christianity has its own subculture, and it gets sometimes it gets weird. Uh, I've said for, for years that there is... There is Christianity, which is the faith based on Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And then there is something else that we, we call Christianism. That is something altogether different that is a religion based on Christianity. But it doesn't look very much like Christ. How many of you are familiar with Christianism? <laughs> There's people who, who act a certain way and they talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk people in Christianity who, who fashion their life after Jesus Christ do. So when Jesus used these terms to describe what his work was to do in the world and what our work wa was in sharing his mission, he says it this way. Can you imagine Jesus calling your name? John, Fred, Aaron, Amy, Jen, Gary, Sarah. Could you imagine Jesus pointing to you, calling you by name, and saying, You are the light of the world. I made you to shine. I made you a city on a hill. 
And he said, I have come to seek and to save that which is, what did he say? Lost. Lost. Now, when you think about these terms, lost, uh, I was uh, reflecting on this this week. God didn't lose us. We lost us. (laughs) Jesus wasn't like, oh, I wonder where they are. (laughs) Where are they? Hello. He knew where they were. They were lost. Jesus said, I did not come into this world to condemn the world. The world is already condemned. And, and then he explains, he goes, you know what condemns them? Light came into the world, and they preferred it in the darkness. I have come to light this place up and bring back that which was lost into the light, to bring it to be found. These are terms that Jesus used. He saw, I, I would say, you know, for all the diversity and the ways that we celebrate, all the different ways that, that we are unique, and we are unique. Look at your neighbor and say, you are unique. <laughs> We are unique. But do you know that in God's sight, there is only two groups of people, only two tribes on the earth that is lost and found. That's it. No matter what race, no matter what creed, no matter what religion, no matter what background, in the eyes of God, there is lost and there is found. And it wasn't God that lost us. (laughs) We have the ability to lose ourselves in our own pursuits, in our own passions, in our own desires. But Jesus said, I have come to make you the light of the world, that through you and your faith in me, you would light it up. And guess what? I did not bring this light into you to cover it up and keep it hidden. You are meant to be seen like a city on a hill. Number two. A light lit on purpose has a job to do. Um, (laughs) No one lights a lamp and hides it. Uh, The kids kids use this term to get lit. (laughs) Right? That's lit. Ooh, when something's really good, it's like, oh, man, that's lit. They also say, if you drink too much, wow, they are really lit. Right. I, I don't know why those are synonymous. <laughs> F- yeah, right, right, yeah, faded. <laughs> but, but you have been, li- li- listen to this, this is something that I never really contemplated before. The emphasis in this scripture from Jesus is on the one who lit the lamp to begin with. He says, you are the light of the world. But no one lights a lamp. That means you've been lit. Someone has lit that light in you. He said, no one, who, who is the one who lit us? It's God in his plan. Jesus Christ, the light of the world. He has lit our, uh, our, our lamp, if it were, the light of our life to shine and reflect the good deeds of God, the good love of God to a darkened world. It's he that has lit us, and he does not want to cover us up. He does not want us to be hidden or or, or relegated to some shelf or hiding out in a church building. Can somebody say amen? Amen. We have for too long been safe inside the walls where everybody looks uh, looks like us, acts like us, talks uh, uh, like us, thinks like us. But that is not what this, uh, this body has been called to do. This is not what... The followers of Jesus Christ are meant to do, to just cloister together and have our own little Christian club. We are lights, and no one lights those lamps and then wants to hide them. You have been intended, designed to be seen and glorify uh, the Lord above. Now, uh, we we are blessed to have many, many creative individuals in this church. We talk often about the performers. We talk about people who are um, in, in entertainment, uh, have a lot of different talents that way. But there's other talents uh, that we don't always celebrate. Uh, Steve Goodner, or Steve Goodner, that's my brother-in-law. He's preaching today. Steve Landerno is the other Steve in my life. Uh, Steve Landerno, who's running our soundboard, does, does it exceptionally well, by the way, uh, is by trade a lighting engineer. He 
actually his job is to create lights that don't exist. He designs the, some of the coolest fixtures. In fact, all of these things hanging down here, you see the, the lights around there? He designed those. Nobody ma made them. We didn't buy those from somewhere. He designed them and installed them himself with the help of rod and a ladder. Uh, and we did all that. He, but he does huge installations and he uh, wins awards every year for doing unique lights in hotel chains, restaurants. The, very possibly you've been in restaurants or stayed in hotel chains where every light fixture on the hallway was designed by our very own Steve Lanerno. So, so now, now he's not just he's not just a creative designer to think of a cool shade or a cool way, but he also has to do the, the scientific specs, the engineering, to make sure that the light fixture inside it is able to produce what he wants it to do. And is able, then, the, then his company, Mass, produces it, and they make it available. Uh, when, I, when I started thinking about that creative design, I began to think about the way that God, as the ultimate lighting engineer, has crafted and created each of us to shine in different ways. Sometimes there's down lighting. Sometimes there's really cool displays and arrays. You have been meant to shine, but your outside exterior, whatever that is, has been uniquely designed by an intelligent creator who made you to shine the way he wants you to shine. Look around. We are all different. We all have different experiences. The common element to all of our lives is the light shining out of us. And that light is not meant to be hidden. He has lit us on purpose, and we have a job to do. There's more than one kind of light. Uh, uh, my daughter, Sila, who's uh, working today, she's uh, taking film classes. She's in film school, and one of the assignments she had to do for a lighting class was to show all kinds of different kinds of light. And so she has the benefit of this fantastic production facility, and so we took pictures of, of uh, fluorescent lights. We took pictures of the LEDs. She showed the LED screen. She brought in her stuffed animals and made them the subjects of the pictures. So uh, she does weird, fun things like that, always breaks the class whenever there's a presentation to make. She thinks so weirdly out of the box. The, the class all goes, oh, I never thought of that. Uh, and so it was so unique just this week to be thinking about all the different themes of light and to know that we were talking about this song and this scripture. Jesus saying, you are the light of the world. And to think that there's a way that you have uniquely been designed that only you can shine that way. And, <laughs> and this is the cool part, that there's people that you're going to shine on that will only notice the light shining through your fixture. Just let that sit in for a second. God did not intend for the faith that you were transformed by to stop in you. You were meant to shine on somebody else so that somebody else would see how good and how amazing and how uniquely creative God is because of the way that he designed you to shine. We've all been designed differently, but the common element is the very light inside of us. So number three, showing off and showing out so others can see the true light. This is probably the part where most Christians really have trouble. Because the problem is we do so much comparing of fixtures. We look at somebody else's light and go, oh, I wish I could shine like that. But their talents, their abilities, their money, resources, their house, their family, whatever it is, the things that you think they have that you don't have, and we go, oh, well, God didn't make me like that. It would be so easy to shine God's light if I had that. Um, I'll tell a, tell a story on your pastor's wife. Uh, Shannon, <laughs> she's looking at me like, you better be careful. No, this is, this is a good story. <clears throat> For many, many years, 
she knew she wanted to be a worship leader from the time she was a teenager and came into church, saw her parents get saved and really radically changed. She was like, all right, I'm in. God's real. <laughs> if he could do that, then he's real. And she knew she wanted to worship the Lord. She knew she wanted to serve that way. But she always resisted and ran away from the idea of ever marrying a pastor and ever being a pastor's wife because a pastor's wife was something otherworldly that she admired and respected in the in the, the women that served her as she was a growing up girl but she could not imagine herself in that role could not conceive that she could be so she actually when all of her other friends were going to bible college to meet husbands uh, and, uh, and and get their what they call their mrs degree shanna went a different direction she's like nope not going to college find a husband i know what i'm going to do i'm going to do this well so so she goes to a, a conference in Springfield, Illinois, at, or Springfield, Missouri, at the Theological Seminary for a week, and she meets me, and the rest is history, and she marries a Polish uh, pastor. Uh, but what was the thing that hung her up was this concept, this preconception of what a pastor's wife was. Now, I'll tell another story on somebody watching online. Our friend Barbie uh, Parham who, when we got an opportunity to go to, go to Israel, she, and she tells us herself, I'm not telling us a, a secret, she tells us herself she was a little bit afraid of the two days that we were going to be hanging out on that tour before our friends Jeremy and Shalisa joined. She was a little bit like, oh, I'm going to be hanging out with the pastor's wife. She's like, oh, how, how's that going to be? And she was intimidated at that thought of the pastor's wife. Well, a couple days of hanging out with Shannon, she was like, this is awesome. Like, like anybody who gets to hang out with her realizes that. Uh, and so it changes the conception. So many times you don't realize the absolute gift that you are to somebody else's life because you're too busy comparing yourself to somebody else's light fixture. You're going, oh, I can't do that, I can't do that. Meanwhile, you are designed to uniquely shine in your place. Uh, we, we've been, I've just been invited recently to be part of a a uh, cohort of converged churches, uh, specifically of pastors, who are rethinking, reimagining the effectiveness of the church. And they asked us, because we specifically have a creative role in this town, to reach people that other churches are not effectively uh, reaching. And the reason is because so many people have been hurt and burned by church, they've been disappointed by other Christians. They've been offended and insulted. I have, I have very, very close friends that we've, we've been uh, talking to even recently that have just said, I have done it all my life and I just don't want to do it anymore. I love Jesus. I love him. I'm training my children in the ways of Christ. I have a strong faith. I said, but I don't need his church. And I am heartbroken that anybody who's ever encountered the living God could be done with his people. But I get it. Do you get it? How many of you been there? How many would say, that was me? This week, um, this week I had the honor of serving the Acosta family as we had a memorial to pay tribute to Abuela Anita Maria Acosta, 84 years old. She was 13 when she met Mario, Abuelo, uh, in Key West. Uh, she said from the time she was 13, I'm going to marry Mario. They went different directions, married different people. Those marriages fell apart 20 years later. They got back together. They spent 43 years. They raised, they raised eight kids. I want to get this right. Eight kids, 30 six grandkids, 40 great-grandkids, and seven great-great-grandkids. But the coolest story I can tell you about Anita was that while they were hurt and burned by Christians in church and sitting out in a neighborhood just around the corner, they got a flyer in the mail from a little church called God's House Orlando. And Anita took that postcard and she said to her husband, you need to go to this church. And being a, you know, the, the, the loving husband that, that he was, he did. 
and he came and visited us with that handsome cap that he always wears back there. And every week he'd come here and he'd encourage me about the preaching and then he would say, well, sometimes with tears, oh, I wish my Anita would come. I wish she could see how loving everybody, I wish she could see what this, well, we prayed for her every week and then it wasn't very long before she came. But the coolest thing about the light shining in Mario and Anita was that they were shining on individuals that nobody else was shining on. And it wasn't long before Tony and Flora started coming. And then it wasn't long before the, 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 the Jaramillo family came in. And then it wasn't long before uh, uh, the Riveras started coming in. And every in-law, and they had two solid rows of people that they filled. One light shining on another. In the ancient world, they used signal fires. Light was used to be able to spread the word far and wide before they had text, blackberries, emails, or any way to communicate with one another. One light would be shined on the top of a hill, and it would broadcast the light to another hill where somebody would light that fire. And then farther away, another hill would see it. God said, I have set you as a city on a hill, and you are not to be hidden. Your light will shine from one person to the next. Can I tell you the coolest thing is that <coughs> Mario and Anita's grandchildren Andres and Heather Aramillo are our youth pastors on this staff, and they're raising their own children, four generations in one church because one person shined a light on another, and it passed on from there. I could go on and on and on and tell you the many, many stories of the people that just one friend telling another friend, one friend saying to another one, and we, we've got generations, basically, of people long treks of this one told this one and this one told this one and this one told this one all because you realize you've been uniquely created and designed to shine to shine to, to be to be one more example to take away another hurting person's excuse to throw the whole thing out to be one to say, well, Christians, I'm done with them, but there's something different about them. To have one more, if you want to know what my vision is, my vision for reaching the lost is I want one more time for people who are done with Jesus to look one more time. I want them to have, the, like, no more excuse to go, okay, I'll look one more time, but this is it. And if I can get everybody in Orlando to look one more time at Jesus, I am not going to blow it in his name. I'm not going to bring up my political agendas. I'm not going to try to straighten out anybody's theology. I got one shot to be a net. Jesus said the kingdom of God is a net let down to catch all kinds of fish. And at the end, they separated the good fish from the bad fish. Guess what? I'm not a fish separator. I'm the net. You and I are the light to shine in a dark world. We look for ways, look for ways to be a blessing to somebody else. What has God put in you that you can shine out to someone else? The light is meant to bring clarity and understanding to those in darkness. Think about somebody that you know, somebody at work, somebody in your family, somebody in your neighborhood, somebody that you know is so desperately in need of the light of Jesus Christ and the love of God, and you think, man, is anybody ever going to get to them? Is anybody ever going to be able to show God's love? If you can't think of anybody else who might be able to effectively reach them, guess what? The ultimate light designer has engineered and crafted your specific life to shine on that person that you love. And you might be the only way that they see the light of Jesus Christ. For years, I wanted to be a big light. I wanted this church to be a giant lighthouse, a huge beacon. I wanted, I wanted, I looked at all the other big lighthouses in Orlando and went, we could do that. We could do up, we could do that. Comparing myself to everybody else's light. And when I was young and stupid, I went, piece of cake. 18 years later, not a piece of cake. This is hard. 
to reach people. It's hard to win people's trust. It's hard to convince them to look one more time in the glorious face of Jesus Christ and say, I'm in. But Shannon said something recently that has just encouraged me so much. And she said, to the person drowning in icy waters, do you think it matters to them whether a dinghy picks them up or the Titanic sails by? To the person that's being saved, do you think they care what size a boat it is that throws them a life preserver? I was like, thank you, Jesus, for that word through this wonderful, wise woman. And she said, the only one that ever cares about the size of the boat is the captain. Because of why? Because of what it says about him. Ouch. So my prayer has been, Lord, I'll just drive this dinghy around. <laughs> I just have a little, just a little light, a little lamp, looking out in the, in the darkness and the icy waters because there's somebody out there who's going down for the third time. And they're waving their hand. And all they want is somebody with a light to get them out of the water. And we don't need to be big do that we don't need to be a lighthouse we just need to be somebody in a boat with a light looking out into darkness and God has called you to shine you to shine your neighborhood your workplace your family you have been crafted and designed and Jesus said it himself I made you the light that the world will see so that when they see the light shining through you, they won't look at you and glorify you. They'll go, wow, isn't God good? For a better way to do life. Let's get lit. <laughs> see, I told you this is a PG church. You can't get, when have you ever gone to, gone to church and the pastor said, get lit, everybody. <laughs> Let's get lit by the light of life. Jesus, discover your unique design in Christ. He didn't want you to be somebody else. If he calls you to be a pastor or missionary, he didn't call you to be somebody else. He didn't call you to be me. If he called you to serve, to be a teacher, he didn't call you to be like somebody else. He called you and designed you uniquely in Christ. Let your light shine to glorify the designer. The designer. In the next few weeks, you guys are going to hear really cool things I'm going to be sharing and rolling out some new vision for this church priority to reach families in our community in a way that we've never ever ever done I'm going to tell you about some of the demographics that we're uh, that we're uh, uh, looking at in our own areas some of your own areas we're going to look and see how are we how are we reaching the people that God has put us uniquely to reach and I want you to start asking the Lord how did you you designed me unique. I'm different than everybody else. Shine through me. Shine on the people that only I can shine to. Let them see your light, not just mine. I'll go to the icy waters of the dark, <laughs> the darkness where people are needing and desperate for the light. When you find the right place where people are desperate for light, you don't have to convince them to get in the boat. Hungry people need food. They're ready to eat. You find starving people who know they're starving. They are ready for the bread of life. Find people groping in darkness that know they're in darkness. When they see the light, they're in. May the Lord make us effective to shine. Thank you, Lord, for this word. Thank you. You've called us to be a city set on a hill. You've called us to be a witness, Lord. Let's take a stand and to glorify the one in heaven who shined his light on us. Let us not compare ourselves any longer to one another and think that, w that you gave somebody a, a better light fixture. Lord, the light in us is the same. Help us to shine the light in the darkness. And Lord, let those that you love that are lost be found. As we who were lost have been found by you. Thank you for the Acosta family. I thank you for Abuela 
and that perfectly timed postcard and that impassioned plea to a husband, let's get back to church. Thank you, Lord, for the family that followed. Thank you for the generations that are blessed because of that obedience. Lord, if, if this small band of people will see ourselves as the light of the world, you could reach an entire city, Father. And I don't care what size boat you have me driving. I just want to hold up a light, people looking for it. Bless us and use us. Teach us. Equip us. And let us engage the world around us because we've encountered the light of life. In Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, we'll do one more thing before we, before we finish. Is there anybody here, maybe you've never asked Jesus the light of life into your heart. Maybe you've never given him, maybe you thought it was about church membership. I promise you, this is not about church membership. You can leave here and never, ever come back to this church again. This is not about what we get from you. This is about what you give to him. Maybe you're like, I, I know the Lord's been shining on me, and I just feel like I've been lost. And I want to be found. I won't belabor this. I won't embarrass you. I won't call you out. But in fact, I'll have everybody else close your eyes again. If there's anybody here that says, I want to be found today, would you just very, very subtly lift your hand and put it back down so I can see it. And I just want to pray with you today. And I want to give anybody the opportunity to say, pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. Amen. Will you stand? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. For you are blessed in the city and you're blessed in the field. You are blessed when you come and when you go. <laughs> Oh, I just keep hearing this. For you are the light of the world. <laughs> You're blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when you come and when you go. And if the Lord is on your side, who shall you fear for who is like the Lord? Who's like the Lord, God's house? Who's like the Lord? Amen. Go in His grace. Be a light.